If you're new to cycling and you didn't know you need to go commando, or you're just looking for some useful tips, then this is the video for you. Coming up are our list of cycling truths about the cycling world. An undervest is a crucial item of kit for almost all occasions when out on the bike. If it's wet and cold outside, then one like this is ideal for keeping you warm and your temperature regulated. But on the other hand, if it's hot outside, then a lightweight one like this string one here is ideal for keeping you cool and more comfortable for longer. But they also serve a further purpose too, and that is creating a further layer for crash protection. Even one as thin as this might just save your skin. Trust me, we know we've crashed a fair bit, at least. I have. We don't see all pros use them, but gloves are a really great piece of kit. They'll keep your hands safe in the event of a crash, they'll keep your hands more comfortable on those longer rides, and if it gets too hot on those hot rides, they even help you wick sweat away from your brow. But when they really come into their own is in the winter. You see so many riders head out with just a pair of thin knitted gloves, but if you invest in a pair of weatherproof, windproof, waterproof gloves, it will really transform your winter cycling experience. Toasty. And whilst we're at it, something that not every cyclist considers is a lightweight windproof garment. These are invaluable if you ride in spring or autumn when the temperature fluctuates. You can unzip them and simply ride with them open, but they're small enough and light enough that they pack neatly and easily into a back pocket. Most of the best ones are breathable, but in a real emergency, there's nothing stopping you from using a plastic bag wedged up underneath your jersey. Drink and be merry is the old saying, and that's true on the bike too. Become dehydrated and your performance will suffer, your motivation will take a dip, and your immune system will be on the back foot. So drinking at regular intervals is key, especially five minutes into the start of your ride, as this is when your body is acclimatizing to the change of temperature. Water isn't actually the best liquid for rehydrating. An electrolyte tab is specifically designed to put in electrolytes that your body needs and it's really easily absorbed. Now onto fueling, and it's a bit like hydration, but the body can last a lot longer without food than it can without fluids. But if you're doing a ride that is longer than 90 minutes, then taking a bar is really well worth it. Especially around the 45 minute mark, it's worth taking a good bite or even the whole bar, and that will help you push through for the end of the session. So after the 45 minute mark, you want to take a bite of food every 20 minutes. This will sustain performance and your ability to stay in that effort, and will also help you build your metabolism. And it's also a great reward on the ride. Make sure when planning your route, you stick to a distance that you're comfortable with. Something like a circular route around where you live or even a figure of eight, which gives you a get out in case you get tired and can't make it back. There's nothing worse than being miles away from home with no way of getting back. As you get more confident with your ability though, you can start to become much more adventurous with your route planning. One of the great things about riding a bike is descending. And the way to get good at it is to relax. So many riders tense up when the gradient changes but you want to do the complete opposite. Relax and enjoy it. After all, you spent so long going up the top of the climb and you might as well enjoy the way down. And we're not saying you pushing the limits and screaming into the corners, but going down and enjoying it, relaxing, is the best way to do a descent. Your gears are there to help you, but if you don't like the gears you've got on your bike, then you can change them quite easily. And they're also quite cheap. Your gearing is there to make your training easier or even harder, but it's best for helping you get over all those different types of terrain you're going to be riding on, from the mountains to the flat plains. There's only one thing worse than not washing your kit at all. Yes, I know, not washing your kit will breed bacteria and your kit will stink, meaning no one will want to ride near you, but equally, if you don't rinse out all of the detergent after hand washing your kit, you will look like a foam monster. When I think back to my amateur days and I think of some of the stage races we did where the facilities were pretty awful and we all had to hand wash our kit in the sink, there'd always be one or two riders on those wet days out on the road with foaming knees and shoes and chamois because they hadn't rinsed all of the detergent out of their wash after hand washing it in the sink that night. And finally, the big one, never ever wear underwear. 
at least not underneath your cycling kit that is. Modern cycling kit is designed to fit seamlessly against your skin without the need for anything in between. Putting something in between is just gonna create chafing and that is gonna be incredibly uncomfortable. And then when you start sweating, well your underwear isn't designed antibacterially like cycling kit is. So that's gonna create a whole host of its own problems. And finally, it just looks wrong. Cycling kit is designed to have a neat, smooth finish with no bunching, certainly not on moving parts. So leave that underwear in the cupboard. There you have it, our list of cycling truths. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, especially if you found it useful as well. Yeah, and for more how-to videos, click down there.